What's up guys? Kind of Westwood Table Soccer here and welcome back to the Westwood Table Soccer YouTube channel and welcome back to the Talking Complete Kit series. The series that aims to answer those questions when you first get into painting studio or if you've been painting studio for a long time about what kit's available. How does it paint? What does it play like? What are the basements? What are the disc options? Etc. 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 Can you use this supplies figures of this supplies basis? I'm aiming to answer that all in this series. And if you've missed it so far, go back through, watch the whole playlist. We have been looking at Zwego, Little Plastic Men, Santiago, and Super Footy. There is now, ladies and gentlemen, today a fifth entrant coming in. Now. If you watch the Subutio show, which if you aren't, you should be. There's a card up here taking you to that channel. It is the collaboration channel between myself, Subutio Collector, Subutio Online, and What's the Subutio Art. And every couple of weeks, we get together, we have kind of a show topic, and we just talk about within that show topic. So what's the best this, what's not the best? And the other week, we were talking about non-Subutio, Subutio figures. Now, it came up in conversation that actually, nobody is creating lightweight, you paint kit that is not true i was contacted after the show by paul pearson from magnificent kits for flicks his links are going to be down in the description because if you want teams painted at an extremely extremely well detailed then you want to get onto this guy price is extremely reasonable as well he's not paying me for the plug but i feel like i need to plug him anyway because i think he's fantastic anyway he said to me there is somebody producing lightweight kit and soon to be heavyweight kit as well. So the moment he just does lightweights, but he is working on and designing a heavyweight version too, which is super, super exciting. So if a heavyweight fan, if we get more options, I'm buzzing. Anyway, his name is written across the screen now. This is the guy you need to speak to. You can get to him on Facebook. I've been told, just call him G, because I asked him how to pronounce his name, and he went, don't worry, you'll mess it up. Just call me G. He has the Subutio company over on Facebook. All the links to this guy are going to be down in the description. Now, he produces lightweights and he has a load of colours. I've not even looked at them properly. They're on the table. I'm wanting to go through them with you guys. And we're going to have a look how they go together. Can you mix them together? Do they fit other figures? We're going to go through all of that today. We're also going to cover what they paint the skin like onto them. So it's going to be like a condensed episode of the first two for each one. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add these guys into the series. That's enough talk from me. Let's take a look at them. Right, so here they are then. We've got some bases in here. We've got some figures and some discs in here. Over here, we've also got some examples of the other bases and things that we've got. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through very quickly and we're gonna check some figures as well. And we're just gonna see whether you can use these pieces with other bits. We've got a couple of different figures here to try in these bases to see if they work. But that's not the main thing we wanna get into. We wanna get into these bags. So let's grab some bases out first. There looks like there's already some serious, serious colours. Cool, so now we've sorted them out. Have a look at the selection of colours we've got available. As far as I know, no one else offers two different tones of yellow. So that is super, super cool. This one, a little bit lighter than this one's a very subtle change, but I think when you use that with a team, that's gonna be massive. We've got sort of your classic metallic -y gold here, and then we've got this sort of light brown sort of khaki color, which is nice and cool as well. That would be really useful to use on some teams. I'm looking forward to trying that. Love this orange tone. I think that's super, super cool. Very, very nice. We've got two purples. Absolutely love this. We've got like a, Classic sort of Fiorentina violet colour and a lilac. Got a lovely green here, black, white. We've got a blue. I think we've got a navy blue down here, which I was just saying, but you can actually see it because I recorded over at Timelapse. It's very, very similar, but again, still different, but I think that's supposed to be the navy option. We've got three different grey options coming down through here. We've got this metallic -y, silvery colour. We've got another sort of darker grey, and we've got a light grey here. Some lovely pink, some claret darky brown type colours, got our black here. We've actually also got like a mint green. Now, I don't see a sky blue here, but I can see some sky blue discs over here. So it's gonna lead me to believe um, that there are definitely sky blue discs and bases available. I know he did message me and say that he had a couple that he didn't have, but he was getting a shipment coming in. 
Important information alert. These are lightweights, obviously. However, I do have it from the man himself that he is working on creating a heavyweight version, which is super cool for me as a heavyweight fan. That is awesome. So what I'm gonna do really, really quickly is I'll time lapse through this. I'm just gonna move these and flip them over and then I'm gonna get some of these discs out as well. Just before we go on, looking at the inside of the bases, it's even got that little bit that sticks up through that grabs the peg from the player, like the old Sabuto ones used to. So that's super cool. Um, straight off the bat, what I'm noticing about a lot of these, and you can see it on the camera, is these little excess bits of plastic where they've been snapped off of the injection mold, which leads me down the road that you're gonna have to give these a little trim up. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you real quick how easy that will be. So just got one little nodule there. Take a really sharp blade and just run it round. And there we go, it's gone. You wouldn't even know it was there. So it's a nice and easy thing to fix. But like I say, they're on there. Most of them have got it. It's a little stage you're gonna have to go through. You could get a really, really fine sort of sandpaper as well. And that would come off really nice. But look at these colors. These are like a little rainbow of color. So rather than show you guys me getting the disc out, I'm just gonna quickly jump cut through to it for you. Okay, we are back. Now, I've had a little organization of the bases over here and of the discs. Now at the moment, we have got five, 10, 15, we've got 19 bases and we've got 15 discs. However, looking at this, I reckon there's 20 of each because if you put the sky blue over here, that makes a nice round 20. So we've got a few disc colors that aren't here, but we do have an absolutely lovely selection available. And I love colors. For someone who does what I do and who loves messing around with kits, having options for bases and discs and all these different ideas start coming through your head because every different color, I've spoke about it before on the channel, Colours of bases and discs will change the colour of your kit and how it looks. And it will change colours up or down depending on the shade of it. So you've got two different purples here. If you put, let's say, a basic Fiorentina on there, that will look different on a darker purple than it will on a light purple. All the different grey options, very, very useful. So I'm super, super excited by these. With the figures down here, first thing I'm going to point out to you guys is try and find one that it shows up really obvious on. Then you can see that. Subutio branding. Now I believe that is because G has the actual molds and stuff in Turkey, which is absolutely awesome. So they are actually got Subutio written around them in the classic Subutio text. Love the look of them, look really good. Colors, like I say, are absolutely beautiful. The bases, the discs again rather, do have these extra little bits on. And again, I'll just show you really, really quickly how easy that is to get rid of. Just run a really sharp blade around the outside of your disc and there it is, gone forever. So, let's have a look then, how they go together. I think they're gonna be really easy. Let's just trim up this silver base, this gray base while I've got it here. So let's go gray with a, with a green in there. Already looks absolutely beautiful and they fit around each other in there and then we just plug one of the old figures in and bosh, away we go. We've got the classic Subutio lightweight right there. So looking at these, they are pretty awesome. So what we're going to do, let's just get a couple thrown together and then we'll zoom you guys in and have a little look. Here we are then. We put about four of them together. And you can see they actually go together really, really easily. And just to show that, what I'll do is I'll just grab one of these back. I'll grab a basic blue here and then we'll chuck in, I don't know, let's say... What colour should we throw in there? Let's throw in this sort of light blue minty colour. It's really, really simple. They just pop fit together. But you do have to line them up, obviously, over these central pegs because the disc itself has uh, another extra bit which slots over the top of those um, little spiky bits in the middle. And that's as simple as that. They just pop together and then we'll grab a figure and you just plug him into there. I would recommend if I was ever going to use these to play with, I would definitely glue them. Um, and they are really, really light. They have no washers in them whatsoever. That looks really cool, by the way. They have no washers in them whatsoever. So they are extremely, extremely light. However, I think there'd be a way of weighting these guys up really, really easy. So let's just get all of these guys back into the shot. So you can see there's just a two-part base as with standard Subutio but the colors are superb. So we've got two examples, we've got the base and the disc from that light blue version and look how different it looks 
um, for how these guys are, depending on what disc and bass combination you've got it with. So we've got here sort of the light pale green bass with the sky blue, and it actually makes this bass itself look a little bit more blue, really vibrant. This time we've gone with a standard sort of mid blue, the same as a disc over here. And we've got it with that green base, um, that green disc, which looks really cool. They're all pink, looks superb together. Just noticing on some of these, there is a gap in between the disc and the base. As I said, I would definitely recommend if I was going to play with these, first of all, weighting them, second of all, gluing them. But they do all fit together without having to do any real modifications to them, which I absolutely love. Like they're made for each other, they fit. Looking at them, as I say, they do look like standard Subutio figures. The figures themselves are sort of later era lightweights looking at them, um, but they are that classic Subutio shape. So not massive details with the arms. If we grab the AL1 lightweight figure very, very quickly in here that we painted earlier, let's just move that out of the way. If we grab that AL1 lightweight in here, you'll see he's got a sort of a shorter hairstyle um, and he has the hand details that the AL1s have. But the short lengths and everything are exactly the same. Um, these guys are just classic sort of Subutio style lightweights, which is super cool. So like I say, I didn't think anyone was remaking them. So the fact that these are getting made, I think is really, really cool. For the guys that are into that lightweight era figure, I reckon these guys will be interchangeable as well. So let's just have a little look at can we get these other figures, these other peg type figures, which I'm pretty confident we can, you know, I reckon we can get these guys to fit inside some bases. So let's just very, very quickly jump cut our way through and then get a few of these guys into some light, light Subutio bases. Here we are then. So we have them all laid out for you in front. And as you can see, the pegged figures, as expected, do fit pretty much perfectly into these bases. Now, little quick one to note, the Super Footy is a very, very tight fit. I believe his peg is a little bit wider than those on the LPMs. The LPMs fit with no issues, but again, I would 100% recommend using glue. And the reason I say that is because this guy in particular, this Walker figure at the front, now I've had to modify his peg to make him fit into an LPM base because they are too long. So he doesn't quite slot deep enough down into, but some glue in there, you would not have an issue. If you're ever gonna glue anything, make sure you glue everything because the last thing you want to do is glue that together get it stuck and then whatever weight you've got in there not being stuck or vice versa now again you can see some clear gaps in between the two types of plastic which for me would potentially lead to a slightly tinny sound but i think we can sort that out by adding some weight and adding some some glue around them at a later date but as you can see they all fit into there and if i just shift these guys out of the way what we can do is see that the Santiago Spitfire base, as expected, got an LPM base. Oh, hello. We got an LPM base just in here and also a super footy in here. Now, these guys all fit nice and easy, but the obvious thing, and I mentioned it just earlier on, super footy peg is definitely wider because this peg here is a loose fit in here. So if you're going to use these lightweight figures on super footy bases and discs, they are going to need gluing in. They're not going to fit that tight. On the LPM bases, like all LPMs figures, they're going to need to be trimmed down to make them fit. And like this, as always, the Santiago Spitfire takes them with absolutely no issues whatsoever. And that looks pretty much like an identical copy of the Hasbro era Subutio. So in terms of figure interchangeability, 100%, yes, it can be done, which is brilliant because I am really interested in creating a heavyweight team on a lightweight style base. Now this could be the answer for me. What we're gonna do now then is just come and have a look and do some comparisons on the sizes of the base and also whether they will interchange into other people's bases. Before we go on to how do they paint? So another quick jump cut while we just get ourselves set up in place, ready to check these bases. Here they are then, we've got the three main base um, elements that we've got from this channel. I do not have any of the LPM bases here because they have already been glued in previously in the series, so I can't check whether they fit. We also do not have a Zwego flat base here, but Zwego bases and discs, the disc fit both base types. So in theory, 
if this fits in here, then it would fit in a flat as well. So that's my theory, that's what I'm thinking. So in front of us, what we've got, we've got super footy base here. Now we didn't see the inside of these on the super footy episode because they were already put together. I've managed to find one that I've been able to get apart nice and easy. So this is a super footy base. That is what it looks like on the inside. Very, very solid. In the middle, we've got the classic Santiago and over on the other side, we've got the Zuego. Now, really, really simple test. We're just looking to see, do they fit in? So let's check the Super Footy. Do Super Footies accept these new discs? And the answer is no. They are too big to fit in the Super Footies. Do they fit into Santiago's? No, they do not. Again, they are too big. Do they fit into the Zuegos? Oh, yes, they do. That is lovely. That is actually really nice. So that's like a duck-style lightweight base, I guess, would be the best way to put that. So that's actually beautiful. Let's do a little comparison in size between, yeah, see, if we have a look at that, if we put that right in the middle, you can see yellow outline all the way around there. So the bases, the Zuego bases, are a little bit wider, but they do accept the Subutio lightweight disc, which could be a bit of a game changer because there's no such thing as a duck space for lightweights. But what we've just done there is maybe create one. So that is pretty cool. So in terms of disc and base interchangeability, they will definitely fit into Zuegos and they fit better in Zuegos and Zuegos fit in Zuegos. So that's great. They don't go in Santiago's and they don't go in Super Footies. But what about the other way around? There we go then, quick switch up. So over here, we've got the Super Footy disc, we've got Santiago disc and the Zuego disc. I'm not expecting these two to fit into here, but they might do. And just for context and showing you guys, this is what the inside of a Super Footy disc looks like. It does have a little lip on it that slots really nicely into the lip on its base. If we just show you down in there. So that's how they go together. So let's do the quick test then. Does Super Footy Discs fit inside these? Yes, they do, but they contact the section in the middle, so they're not going to work. They would work if this little lip bit wasn't here. So yes, they fit inside, but no, they're not going to work. Do Santiago Discs go inside? Yes, they do, but they do have a big, big gap around them, but they do go inside. So you could if you really wanted to. If you wanted to do it this way around, you could if you fancied one of the outer disc, outer base colours that are available from here to use with Santiago's and doing a sort of heavyweight style figure, but you wanted to use a different colour, then by all means you could because we've got some lovely sort of different base colours and things available from G. So that could work um, just with a little bit of modification. And does our Zuego disc fit inside this? I'm not expecting it to work because of that bit in the middle. No, size-wise it definitely would. Size-wise, it would almost be perfect, but because we have these little uprights in the middle, they don't work. Now, I reckon you could probably snap them off really, really easily if you wanted to to make this work. I'm not going to do that for this. I'm just going to say that they don't work, but they could be made to work. So, in terms of the discs or the bases, do they accept different style discs? The answer is yes, they do. Super footies, again, would they work? Yes, if you wanted to snap those out of there, which by all means you could. Super footies orange is so bright, by the way. I absolutely love super footies orange. But yeah, so you could use those if you snap the insides. The same with the Zuego. So both of these do fit, but you would need to remove them inner bits inside the base. If you don't want to remove the inner bits in the base, you can use the Santiago, but it is very, very loose and would require definite gluing in and around there. Um, but as I said, if you just wanted to use the outer base colors, because you do get a lot more options with this than you do from Santiago. So there is a lot of different options that you can take. So that now leads us on to the final piece of this is how do they paint? So we're just gonna grab a couple up and we're gonna throw some paint on them. Okay, once again then guys, what we're gonna be doing is using our 00 brush and our codes 61 and 98. What we'll do, is we'll do two in 98, two in 61, in long sleeve and short sleeve variations. And um, we may even do one in a three quarter just to see how they turn out. Um, we're obviously not gonna paint them all. We'll time lapse through some of it. We're just gonna show you a couple of examples of how to do it, talk about the mold lines, etc. So let's just grab one of these guys in. So we've got this guy on the orange and like the clarity brownie base, and he looks amazing. I love that combination. Looks super, super cool. So looking at him, in terms of his mould lines, he's got a pretty solid mould line between his legs and where the socks are. There isn't a mould line which tells you where the sock tops are. 
um, but there is like a mold on that comes around for the boots so that's pretty cool really solid mold lines between the legs and the shorts as well which is nice coming around here and there isn't that little hole dent in the back that you get on the Santiago's, on the heavyweights, and on those Wagos of Four. So painting striped kits will be quite nice on these. They do have a lot of detail though in the molds, a lot of already pre-added creases, unlike the Walker figure that we've seen before. There's a very soft collar, so I reckon creating V's would be quite easy. And again, looking at these hands when they join to the shirt, there is a very, very slight mold line, but I think it can be modified. In terms of hair, Hair, hairline's nice and easy, very nice and easy to follow. So we'll start with our Mat 61. Again, we're going to go for a head. And let's just see how this stuff goes on. I think it's going to be quite good, quite easy. Yeah, it does. It takes it exactly as I'd expect. The plastic itself looks very similar to the Santiago style plastic. It's got that same sort of shine to it. Nice and solid colour. Remember, our super fitty sort of have that translucence about them. These guys don't. They have a very, very solid white, but it's not that matte finish that you get um, with some of the LPMs. Have that sort of more of a matte finish plastic, which again, I really, really like, especially um, for sort of that older school type kits where the paints and the kits would have been a bit flatter in terms of their shine and vibrancy. Looking around the legs, I think we might have the join issue that we have with a lot of heavyweight um, replicas and obviously with these lightweights as well where we might end up having to sort of just create that line in between their legs to avoid it looking like a skirt but in terms of painting these things are super super easy taking the paint really really well very very happy with that looking good just coming around that line there and yeah there is it's very very slight you can't really see it but you can see that the two legs do actually join together in the middle so what we can do when we come on to do the shorts we can deal with that with a little bit of paint later on still cannot believe how cool this base combination looks but you can see as well as i'm just rotating this figure around is there's a slight bit of separation between the base and the disc they do kind of pop in and out of each other which is another reason why I was really heavily suggesting earlier on to glue these when you're going to play with them, which is what I will do before we do the play test. I will leave one unglued so we can test it to see if it pops apart when we're playing with it, how it feels, how it plays like, and we'll play with different weights and things inside them as well. So the legs, they take paint nice and easy. Let's come onto the hands. What we'll do is we'll kick ourselves off with a short sleeve. Let's see how it looks. I think it's going to be nice and easy. Should look really, really good. Coming up here, creating that line. Again, using that diagonal cut across to create that sleeve. We do not want to go straight across. I will show you on the other side what that looks like if you just do a straight line across his arm. It just makes his arm look very strange. Coming around here, like I say, these things are painting up nice and easy. They're accepting paint. They're not, the paint's not sliding off very easily or following the brush around, which is I like. So let's just show what I mean by creating that sleeve of a straight line so if we just came around here with a straight a line as possible we should unless i've got myself into the habit of just creating normal sleeves you can see there it just makes the sleeve looks funny like it comes down at a big diagonal here like it's longer on the outside than the inside which is why we always come up and round there because that is more realistic that's what i mean about by creating that diagonal cut i've mentioned it before in other videos but i just thought i'd bring it up again here and we're just going to come round. these coming on quite well what i'm going to have to do is make that sleeve on the other side shorter because this one is a lot much of a shorter sleeve than the one on the other side in terms of paint guys these are easy very very nice to paint good figures to hold um if you're like me and you hold the figures i know some guys have different ways of doing it but I'm a, I'm a figure holder but they're looking really nice looking really really nice very very impressive these absolutely love them remember you can get these from G his details are in the description below if you want to get onto these and he is going to be making a heavyweight version I hope he's going to bring out some really really nice colors as well hopefully very similar to what we've got here to create that collar line you just want to kind of try and follow it there is as I said earlier on a very very slight mold line there anyway that you can follow in there nice and easy 
The hairline, again, very easy to follow. No problems there, not anticipating any issues with the skin application on this figure. And there we go, we've created a short sleeved round neck shirt. What I'm gonna do now is time lapse all the basic painting through, and then I'm gonna come back at the end where I show the different sleeve lengths. So I'm gonna do one three quarter length, um, we'll do a V neck shirt, and we'll also do, we'll do a tie top. So we'll come through and we'll sort of show how to paint all them and how these guys accept that. But from here on, we'll just time lapse through painting the basics of a couple of these guys, and then we'll come through and uh, we'll talk about the bits at the end. Okay, so here we go then, just to create the normal hands, we're just gonna talk through this very, very quickly. It's nice and easy, it's not difficult. There is a mold line there. You just wanna come up to it and hit it. It's not like I say, it's very, very simple to create just normal hands. Short sleeves a little bit harder, but we've shown that already. To do these hands, it's easy, very, very simple. You don't need a lot of paint. You just wanna try and make sure that that line across between hand and the start of the sleeve is nice and crisp, nice and straight. And that's it, easy as that. Okay, again then let's have a little look at creating a V-neck. Again, I'm not anticipating there being any problems for creating v neck so I'm gonna do it exactly the same way as I do all the others. Gonna start in the middle, I'm just gonna bring a line up to where I think the collar would be, simple as that. And then just wanna try and mirror it down round onto the other side so that we get a nice smooth V. Then all it's gonna be is a case of just filling in that white space that we've now got to fill in. So let's just do that real quick. The face is easy because you just follow the lines that we've already got. What you wanna do when you get down here is just be a little bit careful that you don't overstep those mold lines that you've already put in. Just wanna try and clean that line up and make it nice and crisp. Follow that round through there. And we've created ourselves, oh, hello, dropped this one a couple of times. We've created ourselves a nice V-neck. Don't worry too much if you get paint on the hair because the chances are you're gonna be painting it in a different, darker color. But that is how we create a V-neck. So if we just bring in our other two guys as well. So we've got our two long sleeve figures just here and here and then we've also got our short sleeve figure on the end in round neck real quickly with the time lapse through we're going to do a couple in mat 98 we're going to create one tie top collar and we're going to create one three quarter sleeve and we'll show you that but we're going to time lapse through most of these and then we're going to get on to the end So there we go, we painted some legs on our little fella there and as with the Mat 61, goes on without any issues whatsoever. So let's just have a look at creating a three quarter sleeve. Real simple to do. Again, it's very similar to doing the long sleeve, um, yeah, the short sleeve rather. You wanna just create a slight diagonal cut across the arm to make it a realistic divide. It's nice and easy to do. These figures, as I say, paint really nicely. They're nice and smooth. There's not a lot of sort of lumps and bumps of excess plastic, etc., which is very, very nice, which we like. But there we go. Creating a three-quarter sleeve, a little roll-up sleeve, nice and easy. Round through here, we'll do the same on the other side. Try and make a couple that look exactly the same. Obviously, you want them to be fairly similar. Um, doesn't matter if they're not perfect. But there we go, through there. Nice and simple, and all we're gonna do, we'll just come around, we'll create his head very, very quickly. It's very simple, as it is with the others. Follow that round neck round. Obviously, using the darker color, you do need to be a little bit more careful, um, especially around that collar line if you're doing a lighter colored shirt, because it will be difficult to cover that paint up. So do take care um, around the top of the shirt areas when you're using 98, as I said, it is a dark color. What we're gonna do with this guy, because I've actually overpainted a little bit there, let's make this guy a V-neck. Let's do it now, while we're thinking about it. Because it was playing me up. So we're just gonna join up into there, follow that round. Nice and straight, fill in my white space. 
bring my paint around the corner so it goes around the back of his head. There we go, nice and simple. We've got ourselves there a three quarter sleeve with a V-neck. Let's just jump cut through the next two and then we'll get on and we'll show you a tie top collar design with one of these guys. Here he is then, so what we've done, we've created a short sleeve and what we're gonna do very, very quickly is just make him into a tie top collar. Very, very simple to do, pretty much the same as the one we showed you before, but I just wanna see how easy or difficult it is to paint onto this style of figure. Bring a straight line down and then what you wanna do is as you come back up, just drag it out at the top to come and meet your where your round neck comes in. And again, on the other side, we wanna try and do the exact same because we want it to be as symmetrical as possible. And there we go. We've got ourselves a tie top color. And here are all of the lightweight figures that we have done for this little section of the video. So they're nicely skinned up. Again, little um, summary. They took the paint really nicely in both colors. Um, mold lines are very, very easy to use. The sleeve one isn't massive, which does give you that freedom to make different length sleeves, which is great. Um, down by the socks, nice clean sock mold line, but we don't have that marker for where the sock top should be. But again, you can create that with paint. Here they go then. On the left hand side at the front, you will see the guys that we have just painted here today. We've got the Subutio lightweight figure in the Subutio lightweight base. What we've done on the right hand side is just moved a couple of the LPM figures over into these bases to see what they look like and to show that you can indeed fit them in. Just quickly before we end, let's have a little look and do a little comparison between our two lightweight figures. We've got the AL1 lightweight figure on the right hand side and we've got the classic lightweight figure on the right. You can see the hairs are entirely different. The arm shape and everything is pretty much the same elsewhere. So the hand detail on the AL1 is different. And the AL1 is definitely a smoother finish. But look at those bases. Look how many different color combinations there are available. And that's without even trying. That's with me literally just sitting there plugging bases in. We've also got another load that we've not even used yet just over here that have got no figures in them. Just base combinations for days, which is amazing. Like I said, as someone who loves to fiddle around and customize with bases, I love the fact that there are so many options available. So another little recap, you can get these from G. All his details are available in the description of this video. He supplies these guys and again there are going to be heavyweight versions of these. As soon as they arrive I'll be covering them in a video as well because I'm super super excited. I love the base options in this. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. There's going to be a subscribe button in the middle if you could hit that as well if you haven't already. On the left hand side of the screen, you are going to see the rest of this series. And on the right hand side of this screen, you are going to see a video that YouTube is going to recommend for you. There is nothing left for me to say, guys, except for thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, stay safe.